NASA has a big construction project on the drawing board. And to get things built up here, it's going to require out of this world thinking and some innovative machines. It's not unlike the tools we use here to move and build things. We take construction in new heights, next on Real World. The lunar surface. Research modules, mining operations, refueling stations, and lots more. This is NASA's plan for the future of our nearest celestial neighbor. Ares rockets will begin to deliver life-sustaining materials to the moon's surface in the next 10 years. And then construction begins. NASA engineers are readying space-age building equipment. And this prototype lunar crane is the catalyst for the construction project. When you get to the moon, the only thing you'll have is what you brought with you. Bill Doggett is an engineer at NASA Langley Research Center, solving many of the challenges of building on the lunar surface. So the problem is how to get all that material off of that lander deck down onto the ground. The lander deck is about 6.4 meters. That's about the ceiling height of a two-story building. And the device that we're looking at to do that job is a crane that we call the LSMS. It stands for Lunar Surface Manipulation System. The LSMS is versatile, a sort of Swiss Army knife of lunar building equipment. But I, both as a crane and a robot, it can lift payloads from the tip on a hoist, much like a crane, or it can also grapple things from the side. The LSMS is modular, designed to allow a variety of limbs to be attached. That allows it to perform a variety of tasks. We have a lot of flexibility, a lot of versatility in the tools that we can put out on the end. We're designing a scoop that will allow us to work with regolith, which is the lunar soil. And we're also designing a parallel jaw gripper so it'll act like your hand pulling together to grab a doorknob and be able to pick up some very small payloads, delicate items. The LSMS looks like a typical lightweight crane, but advanced NASA engineering makes it more capable than anything you'd see at a typical construction site. The device has three degrees of freedom, much like a person. It has a waist rotation at the base. And then you have a shoulder rotation at the top of the king post and elbow rotation at the mid span of the boom. Like the human body with one arm, a shoulder to give you elevation and an elbow for additional articulation to allow you to assume configurations like this where you're reaching underneath something. For unloading or lifting materials to high places, the arm and forearm would be rotated up 45 degrees and extend as high as about 9 meters above the surface. When reach is more important, it can be configured as a horizontal boom, 3.75 meters tall and stretch out 7.5 meters. For this first generation prototype, Bill and his team used aluminum, fabricated at NASA Langley. For work on the moon, the crane will be made of lightweight, high-stiffness graphite epoxy composites. Engineers are looking for the most efficient mass-to-strength ratio. The device has the capability to lift uh, two metric tons on the moon, 1,000 kilograms on Mars, or 300 kilograms on Earth at the elbow, and about half that at the tip. Remember, the moon's gravity is one-sixth the Earth's and Mars' gravity is about one-third of Earth. But if you look at the numbers, they don't exactly equate. There's a reason for that. You would expect a payload that weighs 150 kilograms to have six times that capability on the moon, or 900 kilograms capability. But we actually can lift more. The reason is that what drives the amount that you can lift at the tip is not only how much the payload weighs at the tip, but also the weight of the device that's lifting it. So when you're out on the moon, your arm weighs less, so you can actually pick up more than just six times the payload that you can lift from the Earth because now your arm essentially weighs less and allows you to increase your payload capacity at the tip. Thanks to Bill and his team of engineers, the LSMS is the first step in making a community like this possible. It would likely arrive on the very first lander that came down and be used to offload the robotic assets. 
from that payload, the rovers that will scout the terrain for astronauts to ultimately build the outpost. Keep track of this project and all of NASA's missions at www.nasa.gov.